In this exercise, we will simulate irradiating a snowman using the proton beam. The title of this exercise is Melt a Snowman by a Proton Beam. The input file used in this exercise is distributed in the folder, FITS, Lecture, Exercise. The purpose of this exercise is to consider how realistic the beam rifle in Gundam, which is one of the famous Japanese anime, is based on the current accelerator technology, by performing proton transport simulation in Snowman. In this simulation, you will learn geometry setups, change of source, and concept of normalization. Let's see the basic setup of snowman.inp file. First, as projectile, one 100 MeV proton beam is set to be incident particle with a pencil beam and with a radius of 1 cm. Second, in the three-dimensional geometry, a water sphere with a 5 cm radius is placed at the origin. Third, T-track and T-deposit are defined as the detector, named of tally, to obtain the spatial distribution of flux and to calculate absorbed dose in the water sphere. When using T-deposit to sample absorbed doses within a certain region, the volume must be defined by using the volume section. Then, let's execute FITS with snowman.inp. After the execution, you can get two types of output files, one is track.eps file, and the other is deposit.out file. Please open the track.eps file and check it. As shown in left figure of this slide, the spatial distribution of flux is depicted in the track.eps file. In the same manner, please open deposit.out file and check it. As shown in right table of this slide, the absorbed dose is summarized at the 27th line in the deposit.out file. The dose per proton track is found to be 29.777 picogray per track. The structure of the input file is as shown on page number 4. First, the combination of the material section, the cell section, and the surface section means the definition of three-dimensional geometry. Second, source information is defined in the source section. Third, T track and T deposit are the tallies to obtain the output information. In addition, the volume section must be used to calculate absorbed dose in gray for calculating dose in water sphere. The flow of this exercise is shown on page number 5. First, we will set geometry of a snowman. Second, we will set beam condition. Third, we will determine beam current and power to melt a snowman. OK. Let's set geometry of a snowman from now. The geometry of snowman should be like left figure, but this is an exercise. So, in this exercise, as shown in the right figure, we will use a simplified structure with one big and one small ice balls and an aluminum plate. We consider ice balls made of water with a density of 1 gram per cubic centimeter without temperature option. And we also consider the aluminum plate is placed on top of the small ice ball. Step 1. Construct a big ice ball. Let's modify the cell section and the surface section so as to place a large ice ball with 20 centimeters radius at the origin around the core. Essence of this step 1, first, geometry check can be done with eye control equals to 8. Second, a spherical surface centering the origin can be defined by SO radius, which is shown as region number 2 in this figure. Third, please define the region of the big ice ball not to overlap the region of the water sphere, region number 1, with 5 cm radius, to avoid double defined region. In addition, Please exclude a newly defined region, big ice ball, from void region. When you encounter an error of double definition, you can check it by using stargeo.out file. Here is an answer of step 1. First, to do geometry check, you need to change I control to be 8 in the parameter section. Second, 
to define a sphere with 20 cm radius, you have to add the surface number 2 in the surface section. Third, to define the big ball, you also have to add a cell number 2 in the cell section. Fourth, you have to describe sharp 2 at the end of the 98th cell to avoid double defined region. After that, please execute fits. After the execution of fits, open track.eps file, and you can get the same illustration as the presented figure, confirming that the geometry was assembled correctly. Step 2. Construct a small ice ball. Let's modify the cell section and the surface section so as to set a small ice ball with 15 cm radius on top of the big ice ball. Essence of this step 2, a spherical surface centering on z-axis can be defined by sz center z position radius. In addition, to avoid double defined region, please exclude the region of big ice ball from small ice ball or vice versa. Here is an answer of step 2. First, to define a sphere with 15 cm radius at z equals to 15 cm, you have to add the surface number 3 in the surface section. Second, to define the small ice ball, you also have to add a cell number 3 in the cell section. Third, in the same manner as step 1, you have to describe sharp 3 at the end of the 98th cell to avoid double defined region. After that, to do geometry check, please execute fits and check the track.eps file. As you can see in track.eps file, and you can get the same illustration as the presented figure, confirming that the geometry was assembled correctly. Step 3. Set aluminum plate. Let's modify the cell section and the surface section so as to place an aluminum plate on the top of the small ball. To do that, first, you have to define aluminum at material section. Second, you have to put an aluminum plate of a 10 cm radius and 4 cm thickness on the top of the small ball. In addition, essence of this step 3, a cylindrical surface along the z axis can be defined by CZ radius. And a plane perpendicular to z axis can be defined by PZZ position. Here, we assume that the density of aluminum is 2.7 gram per cubic centimeter, and describe negative value for mass density in material section. In addition, to avoid double defined region, please exclude the region of aluminum plate from that of the small ice ball. Here is an answer of step 3. First, you have to define aluminum at material section using the element symbol of AL. Second, to define a cylindrical surface, you have to add a surface number 4 in the cell section. Third, to define two planes perpendicular to Z axis, you have to add two surfaces number 5 and 6 in the cell section. Fourth, to define aluminum plate, you have to add a cell number 4 in the cell section. Fifth, in the same manner as step 1 and 2, you have to describe sharp 4 at the end of the 98th cell to avoid double defined region. After that, to do geometry check, please execute fits and check the track.eps file. As you can see in track.eps file, and you can get the same illustration as the presented figure. With the work you did so far, the geometry setup of snowman required for this exercise was completed. Step 4. Set proton beam condition. Next. By increasing the incident proton energy, we will find an optimal proton energy so that the absorbed dose at central sphere is maximized. As the hints of this step, first, transport calculation can be executed with I control equals to zero. Second, beam energy is given by E0 parameter at source section. Third, absorbed dose at central sphere can be checked by deposit dot out, the 27th line of this out file. Fourth, generally thinking, proton absorbed dose is maximized at the Bragg peak region. Here is an answer of step 4. First, to do transport calculation, you have to change I control parameter from 8 into 0. Next, as a test, 
Change the E0 in the source section from 100 MeV to 200 MeV. After this modification, please execute FITS and open the track.eps file to see result. Looking at the position of Bragg Peak, the proton is stopped near the big ball. The absorbed dose in water sphere can be checked at the 27th line in deposit.out file. But in this case, the dose remains small, so repeating these processes, you can find an optimal incident proton energy so that the Bragg peak overlaps with water sphere and the absorbed dose at central sphere is maximized. As an answer, 293 MeV can give maximum energy deposition into water sphere. Step 5. Normalize the result. As a next step, we will calculate absorbed dose in gray by one second irradiation of a 10 nanoamperes proton beam, that is a conventional beam current for proton therapy. As the hints of this step, first, the default FITS outputs is normalized to per particle emitted from source, so max CAS and max batch control only statistical uncertainty, and they have no relation with normalization. Second, the setting of tot fact at source section enables to change the normalization factor. For example, absorbed dose for 100 source particles is given by setting tot fact equals to 100. Third, 1 ampere equals to 1 coulomb per second. Fourth, the electric charge of a proton is 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19 coulomb. Here is the answer of step 5. The method to calculate the number of protons for using tot fact will be explained. First, the number of protons for 1 ampere in 1 second is 1 divided into 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19, that equals to 6.25 times 10 to the 18th power. Based on this, in the case of 10 nanoamperes, 6.25 times 10 to the 18th power should be divided by 10 times 10 to the 9th power, so the number of emitted protons for 10 nanoamperes in 1 second is 6.25 times 10 to the 10th power. Please execute FITS using this value as tot fact parameter. After execution, please open track.eps file and deposit.out. You can see that the flux scale and the dose changed with tot fact, as shown in the figure. From this calculation, it was found that absorbed dose by one second irradiation of a 10 nanoampere proton beam was 1.283 gray. Step 6. We will finally calculate beam current to melt central sphere by one second irradiation. To obtain the beam current, we will take two procedures. First, assume the snowman is made of ice at minus 10 degrees centigrade. Second, calculate the proton beam current, ampere and the power, megawatt necessary to melt the central ice by one second. We also add several assumptions to simplify this calculation. First, specific heat of ice is 0.5 calorie per gram per kelvin equals to 2.1 joules per gram per kelvin. Second, latent heat of ice, heat necessary for phase transition from ice to water is 333.5 joules per gram. Third, 1 gray equals to 1 joule per kilogram equals to 0.001 joules per gram. Fourth, beam power, megawatt, can be estimated by particle energy, MeV, times beam current, ampere. For comparison, the maximum power of JPARC, which is one of the most powerful accelerators in the world, is approximately 1 megawatt. Considering these, let's calculate beam current and discuss whether or not the proton beam can melt the snowman. The answer of the step 6. The flow of calculating beam current to melt central sphere by one second irradiation is shown in page number 14. Following this flow, you can solve the problem by answering the following questions step by step. First, Please calculate the absorbed dose in joules per gram in central sphere by a 293 MeV proton beam with 10 nanoampere in one second. Second, please calculate the heat in joules per gram needed to heat up the ice by 10 Kelvin and melt the ice. Third, 
please calculate the current required to give that heat in one second. Fourth, please calculate the power in megawatt at this beam current. As a result, approximately one megawatt beam power is required to melt a snowman. The details of the calculations are given in answer slash answer snowman in PPT. In conclusion, melting a snowman is all we can do with current accelerators, but beam rifle like in Gundam is far beyond current technology. Summary The fifth simulation should be conducted with following order. First, construct geometry and tally. Second, define source particles. Third, normalize the tally results. The member of FITS team would be very happy if you could review how to edit FITS input file throughout this exercise. This is all for this exercise. Thank you.